everybody. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Peterson, and I just want to take this oppor opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I'm the program director for the Community Health Worker Training Program, and you may have corresponded with me already. So at this point, congratulations, because you've completed the e-learning component of the training. We hope you gain some valuable knowledge and practical skills that you can use moving forward. Our goal is to expand our state's understanding of the important role of community health workers, and in doing so, create the infrastructure necessary to support a strong and valued workforce. To do this, we need your help. I'm now going to introduce you to our lead program evaluator, Jen Malloy. All right, thanks, Mackenzie. So hi, I'm Jen Malloy, and I'm here to ask for your help in capturing data on the clients and communities you are serving in your role as a community health worker or related position. Understanding who you're serving, what skills you're using, and what resources and referrals you are making is important to help us understand the impact you're having on our communities. With this data, we can educate policymakers and funders with the value of the workforce and support the creation of a pathway to sustainability. As a reminder, documenting client encounters for three months post online coursework during the telecoaching phase of the training is part of your commitment and a responsibility that is attached to your stipend. So we appreciate you taking the time to um, commit to this. Mackenzie and I are going to walk you through a, the brief form you'll will fill out after each client encounter. So thank you in advance for your participation in this process and the critical support you're providing your community. So the first step will be to download the MyCap app to your tablet. As the document details, it is a really easy process. Shortly after completion of your online coursework, you'll be receiving an email with a link inviting you to join the Community Health Worker Training Program MyCap project. From this link, you'll be taken to the Google Play Store where you can click on install, which you can see here. Once installed, click on continue. The application will open and you'll be prompted to join a project. Click on join project. You may have to confirm by clicking join project a second time. Then you'll be taken to the Community Health Worker Training Program Encounter Form Project. Click on Next. You'll be asked to create a six-digit passcode. Create and confirm your passcode. You will use this passcode every time you log into MyCap. Once you do this, your account is set up and you're ready to start entering encounter data. To enter a client encounter, click on the plus sign. As a reminder, a client can be an individual, group, or community. We want to know about all and any work you are engaging in. However, we'll be using the term client throughout this tutorial and the form. First, you'll enter the date of your encounter, then select next. The next question asks what type of encounter it was, and you'll have the option to indicate if it was with an individual or group and community. Next, you'll enter the time spent with client, which is in minutes. So sc scroll through and just estimate to the best of your ability. Next, you will be prompted to indicate if this is the first time you are serving this client after completion of the e-learning modules. You'll select yes or no. Since some of you are already working as community health workers, we understand you may have been working with a client prior to the training. If so, the first time you meet with them after online coursework or e-learning completion, select yes. Then every follow-up meeting, you will select no. Next, if known, client's ethnicity as self-identified. We don't want you to be making assumptions, so please only respond to this question if the client has shared this information with you. Unknown, Hispanic, or Latino, and non-Hispanic or Latino. Similarly, select unknown unless the client has self-reported their race. Also note that you will only want to choose an identity if you are intentionally talking to a group identity. Um, and this is in relation to if you select a group or community. So do not mark individuals of that group's identity. In the next question, um, it is intended to provide us with an understanding of the type of populations you are serving. 
A client may fit in more than one category, so check all that apply. Only choose unknown if no other categories are checked. Next, where was the client served? We recognize you may be connecting with clients in non-traditional settings in the community. So use community-based setting for any encounter that is a public place. Then you can select client home, school, street, virtu virtually or telehealth, your office or organization, location, and feel free to use another place if none of these categories seem to be a fit. I'm gonna turn it over to Mackenzie to describe the next question. Thank you, Jen. So this next question is, what role or service did you utilize to support this client? Please check all that apply and just try your best. Don't worry about overthinking this too much. So I'm going to go over some of the options here real quick and give you some examples. So one option is advocacy for communities. And this could look like working with coalitions and decision makers. Whereas we have advocacy for individuals, which may look more like patient advocacy within healthcare settings. We have building community capacity, which can look like forming new partnerships and supporting fundraising or volunteer activities to increase, let's say, the capacity of your local food bank or another organization. And then we have a variety of other options like community assessment, education for communities, and education for individuals. One thing you'll notice is that we have options for some activities between either communities or individuals. So if you're working with groups, please check communities. And if you're working with individuals in a one-on-one -on -one kind of direct service um, setting, please click individuals. Other options we have are emergency response and recovery. So this also applies if you're doing anything related to COVID still. We have enrollment in services and our benefits, and that includes really any service like Medicaid, SNAP, WIC, disability services. Uh, we have evaluation and research. Uh, one example here could be participating in the community health assessments. We have health services, which is kind of broad, but think about that as you know, providing skills, um, supporting understanding of treatment plans, or really anything related to the health of the person you're serving. We have navigation or care coordination or case management. We use all three terms because we recognize that in practice, it gets a little sticky and there's a lot of overlap and a lot of um, kind of similarities between these definitions. So if you're doing anything that kind of falls into those buckets, please select that. We lastly have outreach, providing culturally appropriate services, social, emotional support, and none of the above. And so just as a reminder, you can check all that apply and please just try your best and don't overthink it too much. Great, thank you. And um, one other reminder is only check none of the above or unknown if you have not checked anything else. So, all right, so moving on to the next question, did you refer the client to any services? Yes or no? If yes, you'll be offered an opportunity to select all of the referrals you made. See that the list is fairly comprehensive and there is an other category if you made a unique referral. Next, did you address any social determinants of health with the client? Yes or no option provided. Next, did you address any health concerns with the client? yes or no option. And when you select yes, once again, you're offered a more detailed list of health concerns. Try to use the existing categories, but if needed, there is an other option. Finally, how do you personally relate to the client? And this is one where you can check all that apply. This question helps us understand how you as a community health worker relate to the individuals and communities you serve. All right, so that's it, you're done. You can enter another client at this point. 
Um, and you may decide to enter client encounters after each client or to do multiple at the end of the day. So that's really up to you. So I want to thank you again for your efforts to collect data. Documenting client encounters for three months post online coursework during the telecoaching phase of the training is part of your commitment and a responsibility that is attached to your stipend and also part of grant requirements. If you are not currently employed as a community health worker, you will be receiving a monthly survey that will ask you about your employment status. Um, once you secure a job, you will start collecting client encounters for the remainder of the telecoaching period. If you have any questions or need support with this process, please reach out to um, the Center for Children, Families, and Workforce Development at the email provided. And thanks again. We look forward to learning about the impactful work you're doing and engaging in. Thank you.